All right, so if you have your Sokia or the Topcon receiver utility installed, what you need now is you need your receiver, obviously. Um, for safety, it's always not a bad idea to actually plug it into uh, the charging port over here. So I am I just plugged it in. And what we will do, I'll leave it here for a second. We need to attach our USB cable. So I have a USB cable that I'll plug into my computer and we will attach it here. Your computer should make a little ding and as soon as it makes the little ding you should be able to actually hit the little device button over here and hit this. first of all I'm just going to check the firmware version that we have currently running on the mm. receiver. I have um, the application mode set to receiver managing, meaning I'll, I guess, manage the receiver. Notice that mm, it's been, the, the receiver has been on for a little while now, and now it finally actually brought up that window that I didn't actually open. But automatically uh, shows you the available uh, receiver's information. It is, even though we plugged in a USB cable, it's considered a serial port. So I will leave the serial port, it's a USB serial adapter thing. Uh, notice it says Topcon receiver. This wouldn't be here if we weren't plugged in. And the COM number, COM4 is a virtual number, so it on any, any other computer this might be a different number. So don't look for the specific number, just look for a uh, port that wasn't there before. So when I hit connect, and if it worked, you should see uh, that there's a model at the top and a really nice indication that something's working and everything's working is at the bottom right over here you'll have a little green icon showing you that you are connected. If you weren't connected this would be like a broken uh, red icon over here. But if we go into the information tab over here now it shows me that my receiver is uh, on firmware version 5.3.2 which I know is outdated. So what I'm going to do is we'll hit home We'll hit device, we will go to disconnect because I don't need to actually be connected to the management and you see that the icon shows you that you're disconnected from the device. But now installing firmware, we will want to go into the firmware loading application mode. So I'll hit firm, firmware upload, click device, connect. We're still using the serial port so it should be the same option as we have over here. And we'll hit connect. Now this icon should be live and now it's asking, all right, so what are we installing? This is receiver firmware. <clears throat> there are other versions of uh, files that you can install on your GPS receiver, but currently we are just looking at the receiver, meaning the tracking board mm, update. So we'll go next. Uh, it confirms that we're connected. Nice. We'll hit next. And now it's asking for data packet size. There's nothing you need to do over here just hit next and now we need to look for a, a firmware and I know I didn't actually download the firmware yet so what I'll do is I'll go back to Sokia or if you're in the Topcon uh, if you're doing the Topcon Hyper-VR for example you would go back into products and you would go back into the Hyper-VR and download the uh, respective file over here so Let's say we're doing the Hyper-VR. You'll notice that there's going to be a section that we already saw where we grab the actual USB drivers, but go into firmware. And uh, we are going to, we would be getting this if I had a Hyper-VR, but I don't. So, I mean, I'm not going to hit this button. I will actually just head over to the Sakia page. And here, um, there's definitely a nice manual that tells you how to install the firmware and there's a release notes that tells you how to do this but I am going to just download the firmware here download now it's downloaded and once again for the sake of the video we'll take this folder and just paste it onto the desktop here I will not minimize everything, we will just paste it here. 
And what we will do is now, because we have a file locally on the computer, I can now browse for that file that we just downloaded. So I know I put it on my desktop. It's called HyperVR. And notice that it's the same. It's a HyperVR slash essentially a GRX3 receiver firmware because they are almost, well, identical except for, I guess, color. Internally, they are the same. And oddly enough, this um, uh, firmware on the uh, GRX3 in the current version 5.4 consists of two files apparently but it kind of guides you based on the file or the folder name so in the on in the step one what I'll do is I'll upload the step one file which is a tiny file and we'll hit the upload button that's it and you have to wait and notice uh, that's why I have the camera running so you can notice that it's now rebooting the receiver itself but once this is done, the receiver will come back on again, and we will just go with a step two over here. So uh, just wait for it to actually come on. Once it's back on, uh, we can continue with loading of the actual firmware. All right, it looks like it's coming back on. So let's see. Uh, occasionally what happens when you're trying to reconnect for uh, firmware loading again, um, you might have a difference. So previously it was on COM4. Let's see if it's still there. It looks like it's still on COM4. Occasionally, why I mention this is because sometimes you leave it in the same setting and you assume that it will be the same COM number, but because it's a virtual COM port, uh, it might not be. So it's not a bad idea to uh, refresh the window just like I'm doing right now. I'm just pulling it up a little bit, but if you go into device connect and uh, you want to verify that it's still the COM4, it's good to kind of look here. And I see that there's a COM port here. Uh, occasionally, again, it changes. It didn't in my case here. So I'll hit connect, hit the firmware loading button again, and once again, hit next. Uh, we don't seem to have a version updated yet, but the first step was done. So we'll hit next again, packet size, and now, instead of going into the step one, I'll just go into the step two and click this, hit open. And again, I uh, forgive me if you don't see the button, but this says actually load over here or next. Uh, my, I guess scaling on my win window is too big. But uh, this now actually takes a little while to install, so I'll come back when it's finished. All right, firmware seems to be installed on the unit itself. Now what we have to wait for is the actual receiver has to acknowledge it, so it'll apply it. And it, even though it looks like it's actually not doing anything, it's doing stuff right now. Meaning if you uh, connect and verify the actual firmware, it's not going to work yet. So this is where you have to be a little bit patient. Sit back, relax switch your application load back to receiver managing because you don't need to upload any firmware anymore and just hang out and once again just sit back and relax and wait. All right, so this has been taking a while, maybe about plus or minus about 10 minutes. But uh, you can see that the receiver's light is now on, meaning it's not flashing, not applying any updates. I'm going to connect device. Once again, maybe check. See, I mean, it changed. This is where it was COM4, now it's COM6. So it's always good to uh, double check, but we'll hit connect. And it's connected. If I go into the information tab, we now have firmware version 5.4. So uh, there's really no need to do anything else uh, beyond just verifying that it applied the uh, firmware. But now that you know it's there, we can go ahead and gracefully disconnect from the receiver, shut down uh, the Sukiya or Top Gun Receiver Utility, and uh, 
go outside and see how this actually does in the wild. Um, hopefully this was a useful video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below.